Okay, today is Saturday, May 17, 2014. Hope everybody is enjoying the weekend. This video, I'm going to take a look at the, uh, you know, look at Netflix and, and look at some of the uh, possible trade setup for next week that I will be uh, watching. Uh, you know, just a reminder, uh, this is uh, basically it's, uh, just for educational purposes and I'm uh, uh, not making any kind of recommendation or trading advice to uh, recommend you to do one or the other. And you basically just have to do your own diligence and trade according to your own risks and your own plan. And these are just my opinion and uh, what I see. And uh, so uh, with that said, uh, let's go and take a look at the, uh, the weekly chart on Netflix first and see what kind of charting pattern uh, that we are looking at. Here you see that it is not that good looking of a chart pattern. Right? If you look at it, it could be... Uh, you know, interpret it as a little bit on the bearish side, right? Because here I'm looking at the possibility of maybe uh, a little bit of a head and shoulder pattern with a declining neckline. Similarly, back in here in the uh, latter part, you know, the second half of uh, uh, 2011, if I uh, take a look at here, you could see sort of similar type of pattern, right? right? Okay. A little bit of a uh, you know in you know head and shoulder, okay, and uh, so so that's basically sort of give me an indication of a longer term Netflix might be on a downside, you know, okay, a little bit bearish on 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 uh, uh, you know Netflix, and if we take a look at the uh, uh, daily, first of all let's uh, just take a look at some of the uh, the uh, indicator. I don't use too many indicators. As a matter of fact, I don't trade off the indicator if, uh, you know, for those that have been following me for a while. But, uh, you know, basically on the indicator, I look for it to uh, primarily use it as a sort of confirmation or non-confirmation, that sort of thing. And if you look at here on your MACD, you see here there seems to be a little bit of a, you know, divergent here. We're getting a little bit positive divergent on the MACD. And, and that's due to, you know, the flatness of this uh, price action here. So it could be a little bit of a consolidation pattern, okay? Because the MACD is all, you know, measure these, the rate of change pretty much of the uh, the moving average and the and the difference between two moving average, okay? So if you have a flat base of uh, price, your moving average tend to be, you know, flattened because like uh, here the 20 uh, EMA, you can see it's kind of flattened out, okay? Okay. So let's take a look at on the possible long side. If I were planning to uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, taking a long position on Netflix. So what are the setup that I will be looking at? Uh, so let's uh, let's first take a look at uh, you know some of the charting pattern. I see there's a there's a trend line down here coming down here with this pivot, which is the uh, the earning uh, gap that kind of found resistant here, and you can see that resistant is pretty much aligned with this particular level here. These uh, you know, these little pivot, okay, pivot point here. Then it kind of sold off and came down and, so, you know, uh, uh, and found support down here near this 300 level, right, and then it kind of bounced up and tried to reclaim this resistance here, right, okay. Then, you know, it, it, it finally it got back to this resistance now become support and it came down and tested that, that level uh, a couple of times. So this could be one of the support level, the near-term support level that we'd be looking at. Okay. Okay. Now, let's go back to this downward trend line. That's the declining trend line. As you can see that it broke to you here. But now, we're unable to essentially stay above this breakout uh, pivot point. Right. Okay, this point here, right, because it, it kind of came back down. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to adjust that uh, 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 trend line to say here's the pivot high now. Right. So essentially, I'm going to look at this as a pivot and this as a pivot. Or we could also look at it as like this right? and use these two pivot points to draw that trend line. But in regardless which trend line that I'm going to look at, I'm still looking at this particular pivot point you know, as, a, uh, you know, as a breakout point. Okay? So on the long side, essentially, I'm playing on a breakout, right? okay? you know, breakout of a sort of resistance. Okay, 
So here's a little bit of a, a support here. And if I go, let me uh, go to this. And if I take out this trend line for now, and if I draw this line here, you can see there's a little bit of a flag, right? Okay. And if we do a little bit of a projected major move using this as a flag pole, okay, and I project it up here, and look where that projection is. It's, it's, it's essentially is projecting up at this, right? This particular pivot of this resistance level somewhere around this 381. Okay, so if I were going to trade long, then that would be one of the primary targets that I'd be looking at. All right, and so if I were going to go long, I would have, uh, you know, essentially, let me take out this, uh, you know, put it. Okay, so essentially, when it break this. Right, I'm looking at this particular trend line here. Break above this and put my stop somewhere below this low here. Okay? And then if I want to see what kind of risk and reward ratio that I'm going to be uh, getting, uh, I'm going to use my Fibonacci retracement tool here. Right? Okay. So if I, like I said, I'm going to go long when it break above this, uh, you know, this trend line here and uh, stop out, take my stop loss, uh, you know, if it get below this low. So you can see if I'm targeting this level here somewhere around 381, you know, this is 1R, this is 2R, and this is 3R. So it's close to 3R, it's about two and a half, right? Yeah, it's a little trick that I use. If, if, if your charting program allow you to go and, uh, you know, the, define different level on your Fibonacci retracement too, you know, define the uh, uh, level in terms of, uh, you know, in an interval of 100%, right? So that way, when you use that, then it kind of give you a visual, uh, 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 you know, measurement of how many R that you're going to be have a potential, re you know, uh, uh, getting back if it hit a, at a certain price target that you see on a, on a chart. All right, so it's a little handy tool that I set up, and so instead of you know go and do this, uh, you know calculate the number and then divide by the, uh, uh, you know the risk amount and that sort of thing. Right? So essentially, that's what we're looking at on this potential long side. Right? So now, if we go and take a look at the possible short setup, if I were going to trade the short, right, okay, then I'm going to be looking at this. So again, we're going to have this trend line here coming down. Right? Okay, or this particular trend line. Okay, once again on this right here, basically I am shorting on resistance. Okay, right. So essentially that I I I'm shorting it that it, you know. So essentially this is the pivot point up here now. If I take the uh, trend line away. Okay. So uh, so so this point here. Okay. Anything above this high, this pivot point would be my stop loss on the short. Okay, All right. And, and what I'm going to do is any, and I'm going to go short if it go below this particular low. All right. Okay. So what are some of my targets? Some of the target level that I'm looking at. Okay. First of all, if we take a look, let me uh, do this. Take out these line here for now. Okay. So. I see that there's a uh, potential, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of a price channel here, okay, okay, All right, and if I put this, uh, you know, this uh, little trend line back up here, okay, so I see a ch price channel that it could come down to this level, this support level, you see this support level, that's one of my, my target, you know, this trend line. And if we break this uh, uh, support level here, or break below this channel, this uh, rising trend line on this uh, channel here, then I could assume that it is actually forming a little bit of a bear flag, right? Okay, that break down, you know. Okay, so this right here is one of the critical points that I will be watching, okay, on the short side, right? So, and then, you know, if we break that, then my other target, the next target is basically down here at this 300 because it came down and got a nice bounce here because here we've essentially kind of exhausted the seller here. So we want to see is the additional, uh, you know, we found new seller because on the way up, maybe we have accumulated some of these weak long that they, you know, want to get down here, spook them and then sell, 
right? So, so, so we want to see that at the next level, right? These are target level. So, so let's go and use my Fibonacci retracement tool once again, and then see what are the possible, you know, risk and reward ratio that I'm seeing, right? If I go and the primary target is here, right? The first initial target. So it's just a little bit of an over one R. So that's not a very good risk and return ratio, right? I mean, yeah, it's still profitable. But if it come down to this level, then I'm still getting that two and a half, so which matches on the long side as well, right? The long side we're projecting that coming back up here, then I will hit a two, you know, two and a half or so, you know, uh, of risk and reward, okay? And here's what I'm going to do, because right now, if it come down here and I see a bounce, or come down to this trend line here, if I see a bounce, I will go and scale out maybe half of my position. Right. So I take my one R, a little bit of a one R type of profit, and we and leave the other half. Okay, and let it twelve to see can I get down here. You know, if it's break, it might even break through here and essentially just come down. If we if if this is a little low flag, a little bear flag here, and if I use this swing to measure move, I mean this thing could come down to two hundred or something. That will be like catching this big trend coming down, right? See, again, when we do this day training, at least what I'm doing, is I, I'm swinging for a base hit, not a home run. And we get lucky and happen to catch the right one, then we get a home run like this, right? Okay, but even if I were to trade up here, let's say, for example, I know I'm kind of jumping around here, and if we are trading up here, essentially I'm looking for something, you know, right? These type of a home, you know, these type of base hit, and if we caught this, got lucky, we actually get a home run and, and play it, you know, and then throw it all the way maybe back down here or down here. And that would give me a lot of, lot of awe, right? Let's see, if we, let's say we, we, we went up here and do this. Oops, let me do it. Okay, if I go and do this, all right, you see how many all that is? This is one, two, three, four. Even if I, I close it out here, that would be, you know, close to four. And if I come down all the way, you know, trail it down here, that would be basically like five, six, almost six all, right? One, two, three, four, five, five and a half, five and three quarter, okay? Right? So, but those is basically, is when we just happen to catch it. But when you when I initially plan the trade, I'm not going to plan on every trade that I'm going to catch these trend because I'm not that good because I don't have a crystal ball to tell me that this is a trend. And I'm not a trend trader, I'm a swing trader, right? Okay, so basically you have to define who you are and, you know, what kind of setup and what kind of trade parameter you're going to use and trade accordingly, right? So if it come down, I scale, like I was saying, that I'm going to scale out, right? And let the other half 12, and I could set the other half at break even that I could walk away from this trade at least making half an R because, you know, I, I sold half of my position at one R, right? Or I basically could let it trail and leave the stop, I just move the stop here, you know, essentially have this trade to be a break-even trade if it, you know, be a, a bounce back and come back up here and, and got me out because, you know, I got plus one R here on half and if this thing come back down and let's say it lose you know, maybe whatever the amount that I make, if it's uh, one R, then if it go negative one R on me for my entry price, then net net is break even, right? So that's one way to play it as well. So it's all depend, you know, on the price action. And right now, I really don't know which trade or which side that I'm going to take, depending on what the, you know, what 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 the price action is next week, how it plays out. But you know, I just want to give you some idea of, you know, one way, you know, to, some, 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 some method of, you know, sort of looking at trade setup. Not saying this is the only way. This is one of the ways that I use to look at potential trade setup and kind of prepare, you know, some of the, the, uh, the uh, trade parameter to sort of monitor and, and see what transpires next week and then go and... Uh, Take the trade if things happen according to my, you know, scenario. Or just, you know, if it doesn't look right, then you can step aside rather than, you know, try to do a lot of these impulsive trades, right? Okay? 
So that's basically what I, uh, you know, uh, uh, want to convey in this particular video. So, uh, so hopefully it uh, it's a little bit useful to you. And uh, good luck and have a, uh, uh, you know, enjoy the uh, rest of your weekend.